Guess what? After 11 years of playing, I finally got the Mark VI. <laughs> wow, I just showered so my hair's a little wet. But I actually got this Mark VI a week ago and I have not opened it yet. It was for a variety of reasons, but I mean, honestly, I kind of do this a lot. I got this Japanese flute over a year ago. I still have not opened it. I got this YouTube plaque a few months ago. Still haven't opened it. Got these Jody Jazz mouthpieces a week ago. Still haven't opened it. Got this dog a few months ago. Still haven't opened it. You know what? We'll unbox this now. You guys actually have to check this out. Look at his eyeballs. That one is brown and that one is white. Isn't that incredible? You are a beautiful dog. He is in his cage right now because it's 3.26 a.m. And you know what that means. This is prime time hours. Let's go ahead and get the saxophone. This is where I record a lot of my videos. It's literally a dungeon. This basement's almost 100 years old. Very, very clean. There's my Yamaha. I actually just did a recording for Logan Moore. Okay, the Mark VI. Been waiting here all along. Now I would not record in here because that means I have to clean this first. And if we had to wait on me to clean, then that means this video wouldn't be out for another month. Anyway, let's grab this bad boy. Okay, so what Mark VI did I get? The serial number is 140831. When I tell people, they're like, oh my God, that's a great horn. So I'll go off that. Keep in mind, I did not grow up learning about a bunch of gear. We definitely were not wealthy. I had a $50 rental and then I had a Jupiter horn. And then I had that same Yamaha YES62 for the rest of my life. But I hear Kenny Garrett plays this series of Mark VI and guys like Ian Munoz, who's a freshman at Juilliard now. <laughs> So that's the only redemption I need to know that this is an awesome horn. This horn was sold to me by Tim Lin. Tim Lin's on this crazy auction rampage right now. Almost every day a crazy new deal comes out. He's still selling other Mark Sixes, so if you want to join in on this auction rampage, you should probably follow his Instagram and keep his post notifications on. When he came out with this one, it was $6,500, and I was honestly using that money to save up for a berry so I can make sax quartet arrangements. But I saw this wonderful deal and I, I couldn't pass it. It was a very impulsive buy. I have no regrets. The berry will have to come later. Sorry, berry man and woman. Okay, it is time to open it. All right, it is time for the big dog. Here it is, the Mark VI in its package glory. All right, so for me personally, I don't really have much fingernails, so to get through this tape, I will need a sharp device. So here's a nice little knife here. I really kind of missed it. I'm joking, I'm joking, calm down. Shoot, look at it. Oh no, I'm not ready for this. Oh, oh man. Yeah, get in there. Tim Lin, you are a well packaging man. Oh wow. Oh, he gave me a case. Thank you, good sir. I was honestly just expecting the saxophone. Wow, what is this? This is a heavy boy. Look at this. What is this about to look like? Oh wow. Wow. Is this the original case? Oh, wow, it's a Selmer. If this is the original case, please let me know. If it is, oh my God, I have a vintage case. If it's not, then this is awkward. I still love it no matter what. Get out of here. Some leather action. I'm so nervous. Oh my God, I'm actually nervous. It is the moment of truth. We have to do this. It must be done. Deep breath. Are you ready? Oh my God. Oh, oh, it was a teaser. It was a cliffhanger. Oh wow, that's still beautiful. So many layers. This feels like the Russian dolls. Huh, some tricky side action going on here. They won't let me get it out. I'm gonna have to unclip this, one. not There we go. Okay, part two. I will not throw this beautiful leather case on the ground. I will gently place it on the side here. Now, the final season, the moment of truth. Let's get it, boys and girls. Uh, oh, oh, I can't believe it. Here it is in the flesh. The 
best part about it is that I got some green bubble wrap with it. We got some key clamp action. Oh, this wasn't properly clamped. Hope the C is fine. Oh man, I can't believe it. I just want to look at it. It's like when you get food that looks so good, you don't even want to eat it. That's literally what this is. This is food. I'm joking. Okay, let's actually look at this. Oh, that vintage action. This is a warrior horn. It's been through some battles. Freshly overhauled. Oh, let's pick it up. Look at that. I can't believe it. My first silver horn. It's gonna feel so much different than a Yamaha. Look, I've never even had a horn with a pearl on the fork key. Unbelievable. Tim Lin. I hope that album you record is gonna be a banger. Cause look what you've done for me. Oh my God. Oh, that feels so promising. Oh, wow. Oh, uh, no. No way. The buttons just, it's, it just clicks. The buttons feel so easy. What? I just press a finger down and it's there. Here, let me get my next strap. As a matter of fact, let's just bring this whole thing to the basement. Let's hear how this sounds. Definitely rest my pinky on here and nothing's gonna happen. I have to intentionally press it for that G-sharp to open up. So that... My Yamaha just fell. I remember Bob Reynolds talking about this stand sucks, I should have listened to him. It just dropped my Yamaha. Awesome, B-flat's now broken. Don't get this stupid stand, this stand is trash. You have to like constantly put this down and this stand freaking sucks, dude. Well, at least it wasn't the Mark VI. It's on a different stand. I plan on getting this repaired anyway because I have a slight leak in my F-sharp and F, so this all works out. But that, yeah, that's, that's really awkward. All right, I am back with my broken Yamaha. Now, two days ago, I got a wisdom tooth removed and I definitely shouldn't be playing saxophone but that video was blurry, so let's just get it done. <laughs> Oh man, I'm saying this with 100% honesty. Even when my Yamaha was fully in fixed condition, this is 10 million times better. For starters, the key action. I can play so fast on this thing and it really doesn't fight me. Another big difference is the response. There seems to be way less of a delay. When I blow air, this thing produces sound much more immediately. Another difference is that this seems to be darker in sound quality. It has a dark centered core. My friend Trey Sorrels told me that Selmer just has a particular sound and I see what he means now. Of course, the type of saxophone you have doesn't really matter. If you have the worst horn in the world and put it in the hands of a professional, they're gonna make it sound really good. There's absolutely no need for such an expensive horn like this. The main reason why I got it is because, you know, I just grew up seeing my heroes playing on this horn. And the name of the brand is just so prized at this point that I just felt like, now's my golden chance, I need to get this. The Mark VI is literally the Stradivarius of the saxophone world. The only difference is that this is a few million dollars cheaper. Another huge difference is the palm key action. The palm keys are right Right underneath the knuckly part of my fingers at all times. Here's a C and now here's a D. 
Barely had a move. Here's a C, and now here's palm key F. It feels like one centimeter of movement. Whereas on my Yamaha, it's a little different. Fingering a C, and now here's that D. Quite a bit more movement. Here's C to F. And just feeling this, I have to travel so far to press those keys. Now in reality, you could really get used to any horn, even if the keys are super far, even if the keys are miles away. So it's really not that big of a deal, but I'm very glad that this exists. Another thing about this horn that I really like is that when I finger low B, which is sealing really great by the way, whoever overhauled this did an amazing job. I can actually press the low B flat at the same time as pressing the low B. <laughs> Which is really nice. I know most saxophones is supposed to let you do this, but my Yamaha was never able to let me do that for some reason. Maybe it just didn't seal well enough. But it's nice that my pinky can press both of those at once and it still completely seals properly. That allows me to play like chromatic scale. Or it lets me play anything with a B and an A sharp in there. Another interesting difference is that the side E is much flatter. Here's the side E on my Yamaha. Here's the side E on my Mark VI, completely flat. Another big thing I'm noticing is that pressing the octave key, way less of a distance. I just press a nanometer and that hole is venting. My alternate F sharp takes a lot less pressure as well, which is really nice. On my Yamaha, I really have to press that thing kind of hard to get those trills or, you know, chromatic passages. What's a little interesting is that I'm finding that the palm key notes are just a tad bit more thinner than I'm used to. And that brings me to another point. The altissimo intonation is totally different than my Yamaha. I'm gonna have to relearn altissimo all over again, honestly. And I'm gonna have to get used to not having a high F sharp key anymore. I never really used it like at all in jazz anyway, so it's not a big deal. And I plan on still using my Yamaha, you know, after I get it repaired for classical playing, strictly classical playing. But when I get this repaired, I very much do plan on doing cool demonstrations of, you know, comparing a Fairling etude, you know, on a classical setup of the Mark VI versus the Yamaha. So stay tuned for that. Everything about this feels great. I don't have a single complaint. All right, now my wisdom tooth little socket hurts more than it probably should. So I'm going to put this up. All right, well, thank you for joining me on this new chapter of my saxophone life, the Mark VI chapter. Thank you so much for 130,000 subscribers. Oh, my God. Have a good day.